Thank you so much, Carla, for joining me here today. Um, I'd like to just start with um, your business name and how you got started and what you do. Oh, that's a bit of a long story, really. So I'm obviously Carla Cope and I own Kindred Estate Planner, which is um, estate planner means different things to different people. But in short, we look after people's wills, powers of attorney, insurance. Um, and it could be something so simple, but it could be something um, that business owners need to think about in a bit more detail. So we, we go all the way from the bottom right up to the top, if you like. Um, how I got started is a really long story. So the short version is um, I've worked in estate planning for about 15 years. I um, worked all the way up to head of department in my last position. And then I actually left um, that position due to a bereavement. And during that time off, I realized that I could get back to seeing clients, work with people on a one-to-one -one basis a bit more. Not just a, not that firm to deal with clients as numbers, but it's a bit more personal when, when it's just me that you're dealing with. Um, so we've been going now for coming up to two years. Wow. Okay. I was thinking it was going to be a little bit, a little bit longer, but I mean, I love, I love that time frame. It's like far enough away for you to kind of have some real growth and be able to track that progress, but also recently enough that you still remember what it feels like to just start out. And that's what we love. Yeah. Um, in your, in the, in the first couple of months, I'd just like to go back to the beginning, really. Like, would you be able to talk us through your main challenges that you experienced in those first, you know, six months of starting up the business, what you experienced? Yeah, so for me, I'd always had a really strong client base because it's had the umbrella of a firm, if you like. So people were coming off the street. We, we had a you know a high street presence. We had a, a presence in the city centre for business owners. We were in the business district. So coming away from that um, and trying to establish my specialty and my client base was quite difficult. Um, because obviously we, we didn't have a, a, a shop presence. We didn't have an existing client base or will bank to work through. So mm -hmm. it, it, it was quite difficult at the beginning to, um, to figure out where I was placed in the market. But thankfully, you know, I've worked with a couple of um, great financial advisors. You know, they've been really good to me over the, over the years. And um, they stuck with me when I, when I left the firms then and the people that I had serviced or their clients that I had serviced within the firm. Um, they then obviously then started referring them to me personally. And it's just grown from there, really just takes a bit of time. Mm, absolutely, absolutely. And I feel like, you know, we all, a lot of business owners, they do experience the ups and downs, but was there a kind of a defining moment in those two years that's been like, you know, this is, this is really what I want to do. And I'm really, really like you saw the trajectory. Was there and that happened for me before I decided to set up on my own, really, um, yeah. because I'd, I'd lost um, my brother-in-law in, in an accident. He was killed in an accident. Mm -hmm. I, I'm working around death and, and dealing with estate planning. Uh, it, it was a, it was quite a lot in the firm. You know, it was it was very full on. It was, you know, nine o'clock in the morning until eight o'clock at night um, dealing with my cases and, uh, you know, the team's cases and things. So because I'd stepped away from that, I thought, oh, I need this big change. And it was actually when I stepped away from that that I realised that I didn't need the change. Mm -hmm. It wasn't the work that was was the issue. It was the way I was working, as right. opposed to the, the, you know, I love what I do. I love being able to get a, a client from the start to the to the end in terms of their estate planning. And they always say, oh, you know, it, it's not as hard as what I, th I thought. So when they say that at the end, you know, you, you, it's a big tick, you know, you've done something right. But in the same respect, it's so transactional in that if you do it right the first time round, in theory, they shouldn't really need to change anything for mm. ever or a long period of time. So keeping that consistency of, of clients coming in, especially in the beginning, was quite tough. It wasn't necessarily the, the job itself. Mm. Um, I realised I loved the job. Um, but it was, yeah, it was getting the consistency in, in the clients. Wow. And that just grew with time. It just, it just, it just balloons a little bit at one point yeah amazing and I do I feel like um obviously so over the last two years it's been it's been COVID COVID's been happening so did you set up during COVID is that what you're, is that what happened yeah yeah literally ju during COVID yeah yeah just as we were coming out of the the first lockdown into into the second really mm. and that didn't affect any any sort of I don't know business or 
in any way? It's, it's an effect business. It definitely affected the way we've done things. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, we were witnessing wills on car bonnets and people who were isolating. We were having to post documents through the door and watching people through the window, you know, because you've got when you witness a will, you've, there's, there's got to be two witnesses as well as the, the person who's signing the will. Um, and everyone's got to do it in the presence of one another. You, you can't be in separate locations at different times. Um, there was a rule that we could do it via Zoom. So that was that was quite interesting. But yeah, car bonnets and chairs on driveways was um, mm-hmm. And, and, you know, the good old British weather, sometimes it didn't work. So. Oh, gosh. Oh, no, but I mean, find a way to work around it. I feel like that's also amazing. And what COVID did for a lot of business owners is brought out the resilience, not only in themselves, but, but in their businesses and the structure and kind of defined all the little nooks and crannies that kind of make a business work, I guess. Yeah. Um, and what has your biggest learning been? I guess, over this period of time, like your biggest learning in business, but also in life, if you want to share that with us. I think two things, really. Resilience is, is a big one. Um, mm. Learning to be resilient, learning that, you know, Monday is not the same as Tuesday. Tuesday is not the same as Wednesday. That is um, business and life, really. You know, going through a, a grief process is is quite difficult um especially when someone's taken one so young and two so quickly um so being resilient I would say is is number one and two just giving yourself a little bit of a break (laughs) you know it's okay to say you know today I'm just not feeling it I'm gonna have half a day off that's obviously from a personal point of view um if there's no clients in it, the hardest thing for me is um, realizing that I'm not answerable to anybody anymore. Right. So I, you have this guilt of not working, like I said before, nine till eight. But you know, five o'clock comes and you think, "Oh, I'm okay now to, to log off." But I don't know why I still feel like that, but I have this guilt of, you know, if I do have half a day off, you know, should I still be working? But everyone's entitled to a little bit of a break, you know. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely, and also balance. You know, balance is so important. Absolutely. Um, and I do feel like with business owners, a lot of people that I've spoken to as well as the people that I see like a network with and things like that, it's so easy to get out of balance and dedicate so much time to work and then all the other things kind of just fall behind in second, third, fourth place. Um, how important would you say is balance to you in, in your life? Oh, it, it, it's the it's one of the main reasons why I, I, I set up on my own. Um, mm. it, it, time freedom, as they say, you know, what is time freedom? It means different things to different people. Um, but it is absolutely number one on, on my list, you know, not necessarily having to ask for the day off. Um, if you want to go away for the week, last minute, you can. If you haven't got anyone in, you know, and for my job as well, especially for my client base, a lot of things can be done by Zoom. So if I am away, I can see clients, uh, you know, whilst I'm away, and it, it doesn't stop that. It, it, again, it's a big, it, it, it's it's adapting to the process, isn't it? It's adapting to not being answerable to anybody else, but also be working the way I want to work and the way my generation wants to work and that that's a big thing for me is making my generation realize that you know you don't have to be old to make a will you know you don't know what's around the corner um so yeah it it, it it's time freedom is is number one priority it's probably probably my only priority really you know everything else can can come and go but being in charge of my own time is definitely priority number one that's amazing awesome um and if you could give any advice to yourself two years ago, before you started it, when you were just thinking when it was just like an idea in the clouds, like what would you want your, your previous self to know? Just keep going. Mm. So it, I, it was very difficult in, in the beginning. I was thinking, oh, you know, is this the right thing? Do I need to go and take a full-time job again? Or if I don't do full-time, I'll go back part-time, it's fine, you know. But if you've got a crystal ball and you can see where you are in two years time, you know, if, if again, I could have a look now and see where I am again in another three years time, that would be great. But I would definitely tell myself to just keep going. You know, it is worth it. And you are good at what you do and just just stick, just stick with it, because there is definitely a need for um especially when it comes to estate planning. There's a need for people of my generation to to really understand um, how my generation you know think uh, and how they they want to plan and you know I've not got anything but they have they've got like kids and they've got online currency the cryptocurrencies and online accounts and yeah it, it's just understanding that really and just yeah just keep going is, is what I tell myself yeah amazing and is that is that the same thing that 
Well, like part of what we're starting in Action Coach as well, we're doing this initiative where we're working with young people in schools, um, encouraging them to find more about business and, you know, finding out how it would be like to be an entrepreneur when they're older, educating them in, in that way. Um, so obviously we regard that as hugely important, you know, kids of the future and the more young people who are interested in becoming entrepreneurs, the better for the economy, society in general. For a young entrepreneur, you know, what would your advice be to them? To, to learn as much about finances as you possibly can, um, mm-hmm. to understand, you know, what grants are out there, understand what taxes, what different taxes need to be paid. Mm-hmm. But also, you know, understand the consequences that if, you can't look after the business one day and there's nobody else who who is going to do that for you. What legal documents do you need in place to do that? Um, yeah, I do believe financial planning in particular should be taught in schools. I do think that there needs to be more of an education. Yeah. And I think, you know, as time goes on, younger people will be more um, open and willing to talk about um estate planning um, and understanding that if they can't work they do need to protect their income you know who, who's going to pay them if, if the business can't and unless I mean there's a saying isn't there we're not born knowing and I do I do honestly believe that I think if you can absorb as much information as you possibly can and just constantly learn you get around people who know what they're doing get around somebody who's done the job that you potentially want to do I, I had a conversation with my husband last night about work experience and I don't work experience in a nursery now mm. anyone who knows me would say why are you mental I've never wanted kids so the fact that I went to this nursery made me realize I definitely didn't want to work with kids mm. um and my husband's done um his uh, work experience in an office and again if you met him you would realize he's not the person to be in an office so but though that two weeks you know in your five-year high school career it, it's not enough you know it, it, it's not practical enough to, to say yeah. well I don't want to work in an issue but where do I want to work you know so get around them people if you can get a, you know go and spend a Saturday with somebody go and knock on someone's door and ask if you can spend half an hour an hour with them and, and, and see what you can learn. Mm, absolutely I really think that there should be more of active opportunities within within society outside of school yeah. for young yeah. people to work I'm not talking 16 you know 13 14 15 yeah. and then obviously 16 onwards it's it's become more normal I guess to get a part-time job or whatever but if you're under 16 it's so hard I remember like trying to get a, a place like doing doing anything literally doing anything I ended up having a paper round when I was 14 which was great fair enough yeah. a couple hundred quid in the bank every month for it was yeah <laughs> 14 year old it's sweet but like it would be so good for that work ethic and like you said those learnings and being surrounded by people yeah. some people are fortunate because they're maybe their parents run a business or their uncles are in business or something like that but for a lot of young people it, it seems like something so far out of their reach and then they get to 18 and they're like okay I've got all the qualifications that I said that I've been told by so many adults around me that I need but yeah what do I actually like you know who am I what do I want to do yeah. But yeah, I think you're definitely right. Um, yeah, I think because you get to, you know, year 10, 11, I think that's what the call now was when I was in school. Yeah. Um, and you you choose your, your electives, don't you? You know, you choose your GCSEs, which ones you want to do. But how, how do you possibly even know that? And and randomly, I, I fell into law. You know, it wasn't something I ever wanted to do. Um, I went to college, I picked my A-levels, and they said, you need one more. You, you've, got, you've got room on your timetable for one more. Okay, what's available? well laws available okay I'll do that you know and that, that's literally how I, I I ended up where I am you know I always thought I would do some type of finance business type role I chose you know statistics and business studies and, and mm. I'd always done that and I literally just chose law because I needed one more on my timetable and that, that that's where I am you know and if I just think if there was a bit more practical experience to gain from that I'd have definitely have had a better one up to, yeah. to choose and even choosing your A-levels, you know. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I'm so passionate about the subject as well. I mean, you could totally run away with it, but I'm just conscious <laughs> of time now. So before we go, is there anything else that you'd like to share about um, your company and, you know, anything, yeah, that you'd like the people watching this or listening to know? Um, nothing in particular other than, you know, if anyone has any questions about estate planning, um, feel free to pick up the phone. A lot of people think that if they've got a question to ask that they're going to get charged, you know. Mm. What we're about we would rather you pick up the phone than have a sleepless night um yeah. 
So any questions, just just fire them away. Um, a lot of people say to me that my number one pet peeve, I'll, I'll give you this, is um, people say to me, I've not got anything. Absolutely drives me mad. You know, <laughs> it, it doesn't matter whether you've got two pence in the bank or whether you've got, a, you know, an overdraft of a thousand pounds or you've got two kids. It doesn't matter. You still need a will and you still need to make sure that your estate is dealt with by the right people you know and gone are the days of 2.4 kids you know we're lucky if that, that that's what our life looks like but it's not and it's usually a lot more messy nowadays mm. um that's all put to bed with a will you know that it's as, it's a, honestly it's as simple as that mm-hmm. amazing and how do people best contact you where do, where do they go so we've got a um, website, www.kindredestateplanning.co.uk or um, mobile telephone number, text or, or call is fine. So it's 077-923-19814. Amazing. Thank you so much for joining me today, Carla. No I appreciate Thanks, it. Thanks, Anna. Thank, Thank you. you.